What's up my friend, welcome back to another video. And today we're taking a look at Cinematic Studio Brass. So this is an updated review. I did a, a quick look at this library when the library first came out, but now that I've had some time with it, I can give uh, you some additional thoughts on the library. And as you might expect, it's very consistent with the rest of the lineup. It's meant to work beautifully and seamlessly with the strings, solo strings, and woodwinds, and of course the piano, recorded in the same stage, programmed in a very, very similar way with some additional or alternate articulations here and there. So what we're going to do is listen to the entire library, play through each of the patches, give you a sense of what it sounds like, and then you can make a decision whether or not this library is right for you or not. Or if you already have it and you haven't used it in a while, maybe it'll just uh, give you a reminder of what this library does sound like and what it can do. All right. So before we really dive into the first patch, uh, if you want to grab my sample library buyer's guide to keep it on hand and just reference it whenever you're looking for a new library and you're curious about my personal thoughts on it, I'd love to give it to you completely free. You can use the first link in the box below to grab it and uh, it'll give you a detailed look at my recommendations for the different sections like the strings, west, bursts, and percussion. I've also included some piano libraries there, uh, jazz libraries, ethnic libraries, a whole bunch of um, different tools that you can use. I've also included the price and the utilities as well. So it's a pretty well-rounded guide and you can read it within a few minutes if you want to scroll to the you know libraries you're curious about and the ones that I would personally recommend that I'd love to share with you there. So just treat, think of it as a gift for uh, watching this video. I really do appreciate it. And without being uh, with that being said, let's kind of dive onto the first patch. So as you can see here, the patch structure is pretty similar to the other libraries in the, in the lineup. We have these separate instruments first. So um, we have the trumpet, we have the French horn, we have the trombone and the tuba. Those are the core four in the ensemble. And then we have the bass trombone as well, which is kind of an interesting addition. You can think of it as one of the doubler instruments to the main trombone. I think it also would have been cool if they had, you know, the euphonium or the uh, piccolo trumpet or some other ones that, you know, are, are a little bit less common in the traditional orchestra. But hey, the, the, these libraries are really meant to give you the core tools, the workhorse instruments and articulations, and then the doublers they throw in are kind of like icing on the cake. It's like extra. So if you think about it that way, it's it's more manageable for sure. And then in addition, we have a couple of ensemble patches. We have two trumpets, two trombones, and four horns. So nothing quite like the 12 horn patches in like Cinebrass or Talos or something, but um, you do get the ensemble patch there. And then you also get a full ensemble patch, which is not mic positions, but basically blending in or out um, the different instruments here. So instead of mic positions, you get to hear more or less of certain instruments over others. So that being said, let's hear the solo trumpet first. Let's hear the legato. Then we'll play through the other articulations as well and then share our thoughts. So here's the legato. Okay, so the main thing you might have noticed here in the sustains of the Gato especially is that it's very dynamic. And that's a big selling point over some other libraries 
is that Cinematic Studio Brass really tries to capture the nuances and dynamics from the very, very quietest uh, pianissimos to the loudest searing fortissimos. And I love how more or less seamless it feels going from dynamic layer to dynamic layer. Because when you go from, especially like the MF to the fortissimo layers, you can really hear that sear in the trumpet kind of come in. And they're also ending in a little bit of vibrato as well. So it's not just a very uh, aggressive sort of sampled uh, performance, but there's also some emotion and, and quality in there that makes it feel more melodic too. Uh, makes it sing a little bit more with that vibrato. And it's progressive as well, so it doesn't just come in right away. Uh, makes it more lyrical, and I really do like that. Um, now, just do be careful though, because they give you those dynamics, it's really tempting to to go into those higher dynamics and uh, really make the performer play as hard as they can, but you want to reserve those moments for, you know, times where you, you're really trying to get activate those dynamics, but make the rest of the mock-up use those softer dynamic layers. You don't want to overdo the loud stuff um, because it's just not realistic in, in reality, right? Um, players will not play the loudest dynamics all the time. It's just tiring on them and it's tiring for us as a listener as well. So you just want to be careful. Okay, let's move on to my favorite instrument in this library, the solo horn, specifically the lower dynamics, and then we'll hear the higher ones too. So here we go. All right, one of my favorite features of this library actually is the double, double tongue patch here. So you have um, a couple of options. You can sync it to your host tempo, or you can choose your own tempo from how fast you want those repetitions to play. Um, so I, I think if this patch was called repetitions, it would be probably more self-explanatory. But yeah, when I think of double tongue, I literally think of just that one note and then it being re-articulated once, right? Like dugga, 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 that's a double tongue each time but you can actually choose the number of reps you can use here for this patch. So you can go from no reps at all. So you literally just have that one note and then you can have two reps. So basically one repetition after the first note, all the way up to unlimited reps until you let go of those notes. So let's just hear maybe five of them. Right, so you can count them. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And so you can decide on the number there. It's, it's really cool. It's customizable, right? So if you find that you want more than nine and you want to have an exact number in mind, then you just have to hold it until it reaches that number and then kind of edit it in post, like shorten the MIDI note or lengthen it to get the number of repetitions you're going for. It won't be perfect, but it'll give you that general idea. And then one articulation that's unique to this library too are, are the rips. So it goes from an undetermined note, ripping up to that note, dun, dun, and it gets you that really aggressive sort of texture there. So it's cool that they included that. All right, let's hear the solo trombone here. Legato first.
yeah, I just had a thought. Like if you play polyphonically on this double tongue patch, it sounds really, really cool. It sounds like those individual trombones are all playing and they're so tight together too that those reps all line up really, really well together. Amazing. All right. And here's this little tuba. So the tuba, similarly to similar to the French horn, are constructed in a way where you're not going to get as searing of a sound as the trombone and the trumpet. So you probably don't want to write in the upper dynamics for the tuba too, too much because it won't be as effective and it's a little more tiring as well. So let's have a quick listen here. Okay, then we have the bass trombone. As much as I want to show you those high, high dynamics, I also respect your ears too, so I don't want you to die while listening to this video. Okay, then we have the ensemble patches, so let's have a listen to the two trumpets here. Okay, then the two trombones. All right, then we have the four horns. And for horns, they, they layer really, really well. And at a certain point, you can't really tell too much of a difference between, let's say, four horns and six horns and eight horns. When you get from, yeah, like above four horns to something like 12 horns, to be honest, a lot of the times it sounds pretty similar. If you go even bigger than that, it's kind of a point of diminishing returns. There really is no point. Um, so this library is a testament to how you can get a big ensemble sound just from having a few instruments. Let's have a listen to this legato here. All right, then the final patch here is the full ensemble patch. So basically very similar to the woodwinds patch and at the solo strings, you have all the legato patches for the trumpets, horns, trombones, and bass in here. And these four levers, instead of 
tweaking the microphone positions, they actually tweak the amount you hear those instruments. So if I play one single note, let's say I play a middle C, then we hear the trumpets, we hear the horns, we hear the trombones. Let's maybe turn down the trombones and let's turn down the horns. So now we only hear the trumpets, right? Let's turn all the trumpets off, bring out the horns. Let's say we want to bring in a little bit of the trumpet. So I want mainly a horn sound, but with some trumpet in there as well. Then you can do that easily. So this is basically a mega legato patch because you get the individual instruments playing legato, um, but you can also layer it with the other instruments too, also playing legato in unison. And that's a really, really cool feature. Hence why the library, or sorry, this patch is almost five gigabytes in weight, you know? And then the other patches basically work the same. So there is no light ensemble patch for this library, interestingly. But in the solo strings, I believe there is light ensemble. So yeah, just keep that in mind. And yeah, the other patches basically work the same. So let's hear some of these reps here. And let's bring in the other patches, or sorry, the other instruments as well here. The bass, I'm assuming, is the tuba, but let's have a listen. Right, so for sketching this library, or sorry, this patch is really, really useful, and you can get a lot of mileage from this just to try out different ideas too, right? Because you can always dial down whichever instruments you don't want and play a legato line using any instrument left that you do want. So I just like the flexibility of having the full ensemble patch with all that functionality, but also the individual instruments stripped out as well. Um, so of course, the workhorse library should have the instruments sampled in solo, like by themselves, but to have these ensemble patches as well is really cool. And I like that they don't bloat the library with too much stuff as well. You could always argue that you they could have added more, like different instruments, like I mentioned, the piccolo trumpet, the euphonium, whatever. But I think what we have here is pretty solid. We got the core four instruments plus a few ensembles and then the full ensemble patch. It's it's for me it's enough, you know? It would be nice to have more, but for me it's enough. So that's the idea there. Beautiful library. Again, very consistent with the other libraries. Um, if you don't like the overall tone of the Cinematic Studio series lineup, then I wouldn't recommend any of them because that is sort of the baked in sound that you're going to get with these libraries. A, a darker tone, a little bit more passionate, especially in the winds and the strings. But if you do like this sound and you're willing to EQ it a little bit, play around with the sound, then these libraries function, func they function really, really well. They're very consistent. They're programmed beautifully. The legato is consistent and it's just, it's fun to play. It's inspiring to play because the performances themselves have been sourced from very, passionate performances, I think, like actual takes that have a lot of uh, emotion and passion in them already. And that's something very hard to simulate in libraries that aren't recorded that way, right? Like you could put in vibrato yourself and you could fiddle with those dynamics, but if you get performances that are performed in the way that you're already trying to achieve, it makes the process so much easier. And so the vibe that these libraries give off match my vibe of making music and that's a big reason why I invested in these libraries and I really enjoy them. So that being said, I hope this library gave you a sense of this library a little bit more. Um, this video, I should say, gave you a, a, I hope it gave you a bit of an insight and let me know your thoughts about this library. If you do own it or you don't, how come or why not? I would love to know. And again, if you want my personal recommendations for my sample libraries that I use on a regular basis, I would love to give that to you. Just use the first link down below and you can grab it absolutely free as a buyer's guide for your next purchase. Or if you just want to reference my specific thoughts on a certain library, you can do that there as well. And uh, yeah, it's again for checking out this video today. You can read it literally in just a few minutes. If you want to hop around, find a specific library that might be there, um, you can do that. And uh, it was a lot of fun to put together. It's helped a lot of my students. I would love to give it to you as well. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you in the next video and I'll see you very, very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.